Hello. In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. The complex exponential function maps onto the non-zero complex numbers. So really, we're trying to prove for every non-zero complex number w, there exists a complex number z such that e to the z is equal to w. Right? Now here, context is going to be important. For us, the complex exponential function is as follows. The limit of the sequence 1 plus z over n to the power of n is equal to e to the z for all complex numbers z. And from here, we proved many properties of the exponential function, one of which is as follows. e to the z times e to the w is equal to e to the z plus w for all complex numbers z and w. Right? And this property tells us that the complex exponential function is a function from the complex numbers to the non-zero complex numbers. In other words, this property tells us for every complex number z, e to the z is a non-zero complex number. Right? The reason why that happens is because if we do e to the z times e to the negative z, we know that this is just e to the z plus negative z, which is e to the zero, which is one. Right? So there's no way that e to the z could be zero. Another thing that we did with the exponential function was we restricted it to the domain of real numbers. And we found that the real exponential function is a function from the real numbers to the positive real numbers. And we found that the real exponential function is a strictly increasing function. And therefore, the real exponential function is one to one. We also found that the real exponential function maps onto the positive real numbers. So the real exponential function is both one to one and onto. And that told us that the real exponential function has an inverse. And we called the inverse the natural logarithm. So the natural logarithm function will be a function from the positive real numbers to the real numbers. And by properties of inverse functions, we have the following. e to the natural log of x is equal to x for all positive real numbers x, and natural log of e to the x is equal to x for all real numbers x. Right, so this is pretty much what we did with the exponential function. We also defined another function called the arctangent function, and we defined it as follows. Let x be a real number and consider the following sequence. It turns out the sequence to the n xn converges. And we defined the value it converges to to be the arctangent of x. And combining the exponential function and the arctangent function, we proved the following property. We proved that e to the 2i arctangent x is equal to 1 plus ix over 1 minus ix for all real numbers x. And the way we proved this was we used the following fact about complex numbers. And I'll write it up here because I ran out of room. Suppose alpha plus beta i is a complex number of magnitude 1 whose real part is not equal to negative 1. Then alpha plus beta i is equal to this. And so we're going to use this fact again in proving this theorem. So this is pretty much what we're working with. And I'm only going to write three of the facts up here that we're going to use. So now let's get into proving this theorem. We are first going to prove the following claim. We're first going to prove 
For all complex numbers, alpha plus beta i with magnitude 1, there exists a real number x, such that e to the i x is equal to alpha plus beta i. And so to prove that, let's first give ourselves an arbitrary complex number, alpha plus beta i with magnitude 1. Over here, the whole goal is to find a real number x, such that e to the i x is equal to alpha plus beta i. And to show that, we're going to split this up into two cases. Either alpha equals negative 1, or alpha is not equal to negative 1. Let's first consider the case alpha is not equal to negative 1. If alpha is not equal to negative 1, then by this fact, we know that alpha plus beta i is equal to this. But then, by our third fact, this is just equal to e to the 2i arctangent of beta over 1 plus alpha. And so, we have found a real number x such that e to the i x is equal to alpha plus beta i. Just take x to be 2 times the arctangent of beta over 1 plus alpha. So this completes the case alpha is not equal to negative 1. So now let's consider the case alpha equals negative 1. If alpha is equal to negative 1, well, since alpha plus beta i has magnitude of 1, this means alpha plus beta i itself must be equal to negative 1. So we're essentially trying to find a real number x such that e to the i x is equal to negative 1. Now, from experience, you probably know that e to the i pi is equal to negative 1. But we haven't defined pi yet. Nonetheless, we know that whatever pi is going to happen to be, we know that pi over 4 is arctangent of 1. And therefore, pi is 4 times the arctangent of 1. So we are just going to show that this guy will happen to be equal to negative 1. So to show that, well, by our first fact, we can re-express this guy as this. But then we know from our third fact, right, we're taking x to be 1. Well, then these two guys are both equal to 1 plus i over 1 minus i. And this should just simplify down to negative 1. And it does. And negative 1 is equal to alpha plus beta i in this case. So we have found a real number x such that e to the i x is equal to alpha plus beta i. Just take x to be 4 times the arctangent of 1. And so we have proven our claim. So now let's move on to proving the theorem. Well, remember, we're trying to prove for every non-zero complex number w, there exists a complex number z such that e to the z is equal to w. So to prove that, let's first give ourselves an arbitrary non-zero complex number w. Well, then the absolute value w must be greater than zero. And further, w over the absolute value w must have magnitude 1. So, since w over absolute value of w is a complex number with magnitude 1, we can apply the claim that we proved. So, there must exist a real number I'll call theta, such that e to the i theta is equal to w over absolute value w. And now, if we multiply absolute value of w to the other side, we get this. But then, by our second fact, since the absolute value of w is greater than 0, we know that e to the natural log of absolute value of w is equal to absolute value of w. So we have this, but then by our first fact, we have this. So we have found a complex number z such that e to the z is equal to w. Just take z to be natural log of absolute value of w plus i theta. And so this proves that the complex exponential function maps onto the non-zero complex numbers. And so this completes the proof. Now I kind of want to talk about 
what happened here in disguise. Now remember, for the first claim, we proved for every complex number of magnitude 1, there exists a real number x such that e to the ix is equal to that complex number. But it turns out the real number x that we found is not just any real number, but it was a real number between negative pi and pi, including pi. Because in the case alpha is not equal to negative 1, the real number x that we found was between negative pi and pi. Because we know that the arc tangent of anything is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Therefore, 2 times the arc tangent of anything lies between negative pi and pi. That was the case alpha is not equal to negative 1. But in the case alpha equals negative 1, the value that we found, which was 4 arc tangent 1, is actually equal to pi itself. So really, the real number x that we found, which satisfies this condition, was actually a real number between negative pi and pi. Right? But we haven't defined pi yet, but I'm just going over, you know, what's sort of happening in disguise. Also, for the result we proved, we have e to the natural log of acid value w plus i theta. Well, we could visualize this on the complex plane. So w is a non-zero complex number, so I'll just say that w is right here. So I'll draw an arrow to represent the complex number. Right, the length of this arrow is just absolute value w. And the real number theta that we found is just the angle from the positive real axis to w. Right, and theta is an angle between negative pi and pi. Right, so that is really what's going on here. Right, that's what absolute value w and theta represent visually. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.